Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Today's demonstration is going to be on a very simple topic, but it, you know, after I gave it some thought, there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's also more than one way to cut a cone on the nose of a workpiece. And I'm going to show you probably five different ways to do it, just a couple of different ways to check it, one different way to lay it out, yada yada, whatever. So during this demonstration, I'm going to to cut two reference diameters and they warrant a description before I actually get out there and do it in case you're not quite sure what you're looking at. So let's get to it. Here's the workpiece. We are looking at a cylindrical workpiece sticking out of the chuck, the collet, whatever. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a reference nick in a part which can become the point for everything set up to cut this conical feature. If you know what the angle is that you're looking for, let's just say you have a specific angle on that part. And it's this dimension here that's critical. Well, you know what the angle is. This is one of many different ways to cut this, so try not to comment just yet. What I want to do is I want to cut a diameter here. So that as I cut that cone, I look to intersect this corner right here. And depending on the feature, depending on the angle, depending on all the dimensions, you can trig out these triangles or the big triangle or whatever, but it's this little triangle right here that you're going to want to know. Make sure you do this with a very sharp tool. As your tool is in this position here, your turning tool, whatever, make sure it's a sharp tool. Record everything. Record it on your digital, set your carriage stop, whatever you need to do. Make sure you have all the numbers for this position right here. From this position, you can retract the carriage, back the compound out on this trajectory, return the carriage to the zero point, and now the tool's out here. But as you traverse the compound, it's going to walk straight down that line, wipe that point out, and away you go. So that is the first one. That is if you have a dimension lengthwise. If you have a dimension across the front, of your part, think ahead, leave a little bit of sacrificial material at that point, and give yourself a dimensional nub. To the required diameter on the print, right there at the nose of the part. Once your tool is now in that position, you know you have a precision diameter because you can check it. It's something you can actually get a bite on. You know what this length is here. At this point, record everything. There's your starting point. You can now traverse that part. You can leave material for a finish pass with the carriage shifted away from the part, a couple of thousandths, or the cross slide dial back that off a couple of thousands and you can make a finish pass on that feature quite nicely. Now remembering where everything was, where the compound zero set point was, where the carriage was, everything initially, return the tool to this position after you turn this nub, remove that nub, you now have a cone with a very precision nose on it. Alright, that's about the only thing that needs explaining on the board. Let's go out to the machine and cut some cones. As with most of these techniques, the first thing you want to do is face the part off, make sure it is flat, and that the outside edge is relatively clean with no raised burr. That will affect the location of the tool. For better visibility, blew up the edge so that you can witness the contact just a little clearer. I am going to use a form tool, and when I make contact with the form tool, I'm going to be to the extreme left-hand side so I can achieve maximum width of the feature. Once you see your witness mark, zero your digital, set your carriage stop, and simply move in the required distance. If you experience any chatter, back the tool off, and slow down the RPM of the machine. 
right to the stop and get out. Problem solved. As with most of these techniques, face the part off. Make sure there's no raised edge. Blew up the corner so you can see the tool contact better. Locating the tool initially, I will be towards the right hand side of the tool and use this tool as a turning tool. Once you make contact with your edge, sweep the tool to the distance required on the print. Now you can see that that feature right there is much wider than the actual tool is. By stepping down and blending like this, you can achieve a feature greater than the width of the tool with ease. As shown. Once again, face the part. And blew up the corner. Now keep an eye on the carriage movement in the right hand side of the screen. Right now the carriage is locked and I am sweeping that tool back and forth with the compound. Once I witness contact on that corner, I'll back the compound out longer than the length of the cut required. Move the carriage to the length required. Finish the cut with the compound. done. This particular technique is the one from the initial whiteboard presentation. Turn the diameter to a known diameter and length. Record those positions. If you're lucky, you'll get your blue to cooperate down in the corner because it just doesn't like to stay in the corner, but it's very important that it's there. Once you've recorded all your positions where the tool is actually sitting when you turn that diameter and face, move the carriage out, move the compound out, and start your cut. Watch for that blue line to disappear, and you'll know that you have effectively intersected that point and your cone should be exactly on position where you want it. Watch the blue line go away. Ever so slightly and see you later. This technique is very similar to the last technique presented, only this particular nub here will be sacrificed after the fact. Once you have the diameter to a length and diameter that you're looking for, that is the origin point for the conical feature. And for no other reason than just to blend everything. I knocked that conical feature off because I know exactly where that tool is right there. Come back, face off the sacrificial material, make a final facing pass, and now your cone has a very precision starting diameter. This example of working to a line is the only time you're going to see me use a vernier to scratch a line in a part. Not a fan of doing that. Once you've established a layout line on the part, I always like to back turn just a little bit 
as close to that line as I possibly can to come up with all the numbers for my dials. Now you can move the carriage out, put the tool where it needs to be, and there'll be no surprises when you shoot for that line. You're not going to erase it horribly on the first try. Back turning is a good way to assure that you're going to hit that line comfortably every time. If there's any wiggle in the line, as you see right there, that would indicate an out of concentric condition of the material. If you need a transition angle between two diameters, leave the compound set at the required angle, turn the first diameter, and then cut the angle from the termination point of the first cylindrical feature. If the second required diameter is not the stock diameter, it's probably a good idea to turn the two diameters first and then make the transition feature as shown. A very popular method for controlling the length of a feature is to have the compound positioned parallel with the workpiece. Make sure the carriage is up against a positive stop at this point and the part has been faced off or the tool is located. Simply crank in the compound for the desired length of the feature. Away you go. If you have a carriage stop and you want to control the length of a feature, pinch a known standard in between the carriage stop and the carriage. This is after you faced off the part and do not move the carriage out. Once you remove the stop, once you remove the standard, when the carriage returns to the stop, it will have shifted the length of the standard. In the absence of an optical comparator, you can use the beam of your caliper to measure the length of the feature. Now contrast is good in this particular method so put something behind or below the part to assist in the visibility. I'm just going to throw a paper towel on the ways in the back and you can see how it really does enhance that whole area. This will get you very close. If you do this make sure that the caliper is parallel to the workpiece for the most accurate reading. If you have a nice flat on the face of your part, the method that I prefer is a depth mic. It is very solid and it is considerably less awkward than holding a caliper. Dial it in, away you go.